What's up, Tech Gang? Stefan here from TechRite. Today we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G versus the Samsung Galaxy A51. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Hope everyone is staying safe out there. So we have the Galaxy A51 on the right and we have the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra on the left. Now there's about a $600 price difference between both these devices. You can get the Galaxy A51 fully unlocked for about 400 bucks. Now on the left, we have the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. After tax, you're gonna pay a little bit over 1100 bucks buying this device new. Buying it used to, you can get it for about $1,000. But we're gonna go ahead and compare these and show you which device you actually need. All right, everyone, so starting off with the displays, we have a 6.9 inch display on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra compared to a 6.5 inch display. So we have about a half an inch difference on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra from the A51. The A51, a little bit smaller, as you guys can see. We also have a 2K screen. So we're gonna have a 1440p screen on the Note 20 Ultra compared to a 1080p screen on the Galaxy A51. Now the PPI is actually really good on the Galaxy A51. We have a PPI of four. 105 on the Galaxy A51 compared to the Note 20 Ultra being 496. Now as for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, we will have a dynamic AMOLED screen, so it's going to be a little bit better than the Galaxy A51 having a super AMOLED screen. But really for the price, you're really getting more bang for the buck with the Galaxy A51. Now both these devices are pretty similar as far as screen to body ratio goes, with about a 92% screen to body ratio on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and we have about an 88% screen to body ratio on the Galaxy A51. As for the features on these devices displays, we have 120 hertz refresh rate on the Note 20 Ultra. We also have HDR video support, scratch resistant glass, which is the Corn and Gorilla Glass Victus, an ambient light sensor, and a proximity sensor. On the Galaxy A51, we have a scratch resistant glass, which is going to be Corn and Gorilla Glass 3, ambient light sensor and proximity light sensor. So um, the Note 20 Ultra is obviously gonna have a better refresh rate compared to the A51, and it's also going to have that better Corning Gorilla Glass. Now as for the system hardware in the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, starting off with the system chips, we have a Snapdragon 865 Plus, which is the best system chip you can get as far as Android goes. That's on the Note 20 Ultra. Going to the Galaxy A51, we have the Samsung Exynos 9611, which is actually a really decent system chip, especially for the price. Going on to the processor of the Note 20 Ultra, we have an octa-core Cairo 585. And on the Galaxy A51, we actually have an octa-core ARM Cortex A73 and ARM Cortex A53. Um, which is really, really nice to see in the A51. That's a value you really don't see anywhere else. I really think Samsung's doing some great things with these A-series devices. Now going down to the GPU, we have an Adreno 650 on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, so you know games are gonna run insanely smooth on that device, and the graphics are going to look beautiful. Going to the Galaxy A51, we're gonna have the Mali G72. Um, this is going to actually run games pretty smoothly on this device as well, so you're not gonna have Really any problems there. Now going under the RAM, we have 12 gigabytes of RAM on the Note 20 Ultra 5G, and we have four gigabytes of RAM on the Galaxy A51. This seems to be the trend um, of comparisons, comparing devices to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. The RAM seems to be the most obvious thing. And I think Samsung really just like overdoes it with the RAM. I don't really think anybody really needs that much RAM on a device. But honestly, Samsung, go ahead and do your thing. Going on to the internal storage, we have 128 gigabytes of internal storage on both of these devices. And we have about 107 gigabytes uh, ready to use on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and 105.9 gigabytes ready to use on the Galaxy A51. Now, as for the Galaxy A51, we only have about 512 gigabytes if you guys would like to expand your storage. And if you wanna expand your memory on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, you can use up to a thousand gigabyte SD card to go ahead and expand your memory. Both these devices have Android 10.0 and both devices have Samsung One UI. Now, as for the battery capacity, we have a 4,500 milliamp battery on the Note 20 Ultra and a 4,000 milliamp battery on the Galaxy A51. Both these devices' batteries are not removable. We do have fast charging on the Galaxy A51 as a battery feature. 
Now going to the Note 20 Ultra for the charging features, we have Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0, Samsung Adaptive Fast Charging, Qi and Paramat Wireless Charging, Reverse Wireless Charging. So we have a lot more features on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Now going on to the cameras on these devices, the Galaxy A51 actually has a quad camera setup and the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra only has a triple camera setup. Obviously the Note 20 Ultra is going to have better specifications and starting off with its main camera, we have 108 megapixels. We're also gonna have OIS inside the main camera and laser and PDAF. Onto the secondary camera on the Note 20 Ultra, we have a 12 megapixel telephoto OIS and PDAF camera. And for the third camera, we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide autofocus camera. Now comparing that to the Galaxy A51, we do have one more camera than the Note 20 Ultra. So for our main camera, we have a 48 megapixel PDAF camera. For a secondary, we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide. For our third camera, we have a five megapixel macro. And our fourth camera, we're gonna have a five megapixel depth information camera. Now, as far as video recording on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, we can film up to 8K UHD at 24 frames per second. We can also film in 4K at 60 frames per second, full HD at 240 frames per second, and 720p at 960 frames per second. Now, comparing that to the Galaxy A51, we can film 4K and 30 frames per second, 1080p and 120 frames per second, and 720p at 240 frames per second. So I feel like the Galaxy A51 is really a device that you know, has it all, has the cheap price, you know, has good specifications, you know, supports 4K, supports 60 frames per second, heck, even supports 240 frames per second, and you're getting this in the device that you can get under $400. So I just wanted to bring that up. I thought that was really, really cool. And as far as the front-facing cameras go, we have a front-facing 10 megapixel PDAF and HDR camera on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. and the Galaxy A51, we actually have a 32 megapixel Pixel HDR camera for the front facing camera. Really cool to see Samsung put a little bit more tech in their front facing cameras, especially for a mid range device like this. Now, as far as the materials on these devices, the Galaxy A51's back is going to be plastic and the frame is going to be plastic. Going on to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, we're going to have a glass back and we're going to have a stainless steel frame. Now, both these devices feel really good. Obviously, the Note 20 Ultra 5G is going to feel much better, uh, but I don't think the Galaxy A51 feels really that cheap. The Galaxy A51 is actually a little bit heavier than you would think, and definitely feels more premium than you would think. Um, doesn't really feel like plastic all that much. The other thing, both these devices are also going to have an in-screen fingerprint sensors, and we're gonna also have 2D face unlock, so I thought that was really cool that both these devices have that in them. Now, as for the colors, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is going to have Mystic Black, Mystic Bronze, and Mystic White. Now, bear with me, on the Galaxy A51, we're going to have Prism Crush Black, Prism Crush White, Prism Crush Pink and Prism Crush Blue. So that was really, really hard to say, but those are the colors you're gonna see on the Galaxy A51. And I think the Galaxy A51 colors look way better than the Galaxy Note 20 Ultras. Obviously the Ultras kind of look a bit more adult-like. They look a bit more sophisticated for like a businessman or whatever, but I think the Galaxy A51 colors are a lot more fun. And obviously comparing the cellular specifications, um, the bands on the Galaxy A51 are almost going to match the bands of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra um, other than the 5G bands. So we don't have 5G bands, but we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 12, 13, 14, 20, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, 66 and 71 on the a51 which is really great to see for the american users for the galaxy a51 because this device is going to run perfectly has pretty much all of the best bands that you need um but we do have 5g on the note 20 ultra now we did do a geekbench test and starting off the galaxy note 20 ultra we got a single core score of 979 and a multi-core score of 3204 
Going to the Galaxy A51, we got a single core score of 346 and a multi-core score of 1208. Now, comparing the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra to other devices, this is going to beat every single device on the list as far as the power and specifications go. So that beats everything. Now, as far as the Galaxy A51 for our multi-core score, we're gonna land in between the Galaxy S8 and the Galaxy A50. So we're landing in a pretty good spot I'd say and as for the single core score we're gonna land in about the same spot so this is really a fair device as far as the price goes so you're really getting some decent specifications as far as the price goes on the Galaxy A51 so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below I think you're really winning more if you get the Galaxy A51 because you get a lot of the features that you see in the Note 20 Ultra um, and for pretty much six to seven hundred dollars off but if you guys think otherwise i'd like to hear your opinions in the comment section down below if you did enjoy this video please leave a like down below as well as subscribing if you are not part of the tech gang already also hit the notification bell if you guys want to be notified every time i do upload a new video this has been safan from tech right peace out tech gang